Welcome to this problem, my party people. This one might look pretty innocent, but there is one piece of information here that's gonna have to be accounted for. So let me go ahead and go over it, get the setup, because once you get the setup, then you'll see how the rest of it comes into place. But you gotta know how to set these problems up, because if you don't, then you might make a small mistake that gets you the completely wrong answer. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started here. The question, first things first, there's always a question. It says, with the leak present, we can ignore that, how long will it take to fill the empty pool? So from the beginning here, it says, how long will it take? So we're looking for time and then fill the empty pool. All right, fill from empty. Sounds good, right? We wanna know how much time it'll take to fill from empty. Perfect, sounds good. So what are we gonna do with that information? Well, let's read what information we have and see what kind of problem we're dealing with. So what I see here, it says, a pipe can fill an above ground pool in nine hours. An unnoticed leak in the pool can drain a full pool in 12 hours. With the leak present, how long will it take to fill the pool? So from the story, what I got, and again, the story is more important than the numbers. From the story, I got, hey, we got ourselves, we got ourselves an above ground pool, right? We can fill that with water, fill that with water. We have an above ground pool, right? And what we're doing is we're using a pipe to basically fill in. So I'm gonna use purple here in nine hours. So this pipe over here, this pipe can go ahead and fill into the pool and it'll take nine hours. But then it says an unnoticed leak. Okay, there's an unnoticed leak and we'll drain a full pool in 12 hours. So it can drain the, the pool in 12 hours. And what that means is, oh, over here, there's a little crack and that water is actually coming out of that leak. And so the question is, it is a combined work word problem. These two things, the leak and the pipe are working together, but not in the way that you think. Not in the way that you think. When you set up your formula for a combined work word problem, you are not, you are not adding these fractions together. Because think about the story. Are the, are the pipe and the leak filling the pool? No, the pipe is filling, the leak is draining the pool. And so with that, it is combined work, but not with adding, it has to be subtraction. I hope that this makes sense. So normally we have one over A, plus one over B equals one over T. And so here, yeah, they're working together, but not again, not in the way that you think. T is the time working together. That's the question of the day. That's the answer we're going for. But what we need to know is that here, look, it can fill the pool in nine hours. So we can use one over nine here. The problem here is the leak will what drain right here it'll drain the pool so it's taking water out they're not working together these are opposing each other while one fills the other one drains and so we're trying to see how long it'll take with that leak to fill the pool up and it is possible because if you think about it if the leak is tiny but you're filling in a lot of water yeah that water level still gonna rise it's just a matter of, oh, it's actually moving a little slower because that leak is there. So instead of by itself going Vring! with the leak, it might go, mm, and it'll take definitely a little longer. And so with that said, that's why we are going to use, not addition here, we're going to use subtraction because it's a leak. It is leaking out and that will be at a rate of one over 12. Because again, It'll take 12 hours to drain it, to subtract it. It'll take 12 hours. So I gotta make sure that we understand this setup here. Because understanding the setup, again, is king to getting these problems done. And so there we are, one over T, that's the answer we're looking for. But now all we have to do is solve this equation and we're done. And really quick, before we continue my math party people, I know you're enjoying this and you can have thousands of problems just like this in our program. In our program, you have four main things to help you succeed and more. 
but mainly in our course, you're gonna get access to recorded lessons, you're gonna get access to guided practice just like this, worksheets that you can print out and try or keep them online, and lastly, speed drills to raise your confidence. That way when you take the test, there's no test anxiety, there's no pressure, because you've been timed before, you know what to do, and that's the feeling that we want. And all of that's included in our program and more, so take a brief moment, click the link here in this video or in the description to learn about the program, and then reach out to us if you have any questions. Sign up now, let's get going, and let's get back to the problem. So I hope the graphic here made sense. I hope that it did, because if it didn't, I mean, I'm more than happy to uh, revisit this and help you out even more, but we just have to make sure that at the end of the day, we can understand the proper setups because really that's all we have. That's all we have. The rest of it is really just calculating. But if you don't understand the setup, then how are we supposed to be confident in our answers? So that's what I'm talking about, my party people. I wanna make sure that you're confident. But let's go ahead and solve this now. Let's get it done. What can nine and 12 both go into? We need the same denominator here to subtract anyway. What is that gonna be? Well, what it's gonna be here is 36. Nine and 12, both go into 36. 36, because nine times four is 36, 12 times three, 36. That's my least common denominator. Again, if you wanted to, you can just do nine times 12, 12 times nine, yeah, you could do that. But I'm gonna use the least common denominator to give myself the easiest time, the least amount of work to do. So with that, boom, nine times four, up top and bottom, 12 times three, on the top and the bottom. Numerator, denominator, however you want to say it. So from there, booyah, we're going to have 4 over 36 minus 3 over 36 equals 1 over t. From here, we're going to go ahead and combine these fractions. 4 minus 3 is going to give me 1. Remember, we are subtracting. 1 over 36 equals 1 over t. Well, with that said, oh, look at that. We have 1 over 36 equals 1 over t. Uh, can't we just solve this by, uh, you know, flipping it or cross multiplying? Absolutely. Either way it works. And if you just flip them around, because again, if you flip one side, you got to flip the other. We're going to get 36 equals T. 36 what? 36 hours. Because remember, the, the pipe can fill it in nine hours and the leak can drain in 12 hours. Our answer is going to be in hours. So our answer will be 36 hours. 36 hours, and there it is, my party people. That's why D is gonna be the correct answer. I really hope that you enjoyed this one because again, this is a really, really good problem to observe with combined work. There's so many different variations of it, and this one involved not when the two things are working together, but when one is basically holding the other back by a bit. And in that case, we still use our same formula but instead of adding, we subtracted since they're working opposite. One is trying to do the work and one is slowing it down. So with that said, my party people, as always, let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help you succeed and I'll do anything it takes to help you get there. I'll see you. Let's get to it. My party people, as always, thanks for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. That way you can see all the updates that we come out with so you can keep improving. So don't wait, subscribe now. And then while you wait for the next video, look here or there to see a related video that's gonna help you improve even more. Let's keep raising that score and let's get the job we want. I'll see you soon.